I'm Katrina Richter Lunn. Um, I'm the granddaughter of Roy Lunn, and I feel extremely honored to be here tonight. And that my grandfather asked me and my mother to come here to accept this award on his behalf. Some say that those who inspire you do, uh, do so by setting an example for what you want to become. I believe this is true. However, for me, those who inspire me and who the, and he who has inspired me the most has done so through their knowledge and their willingness to pass it on. My grandfather and I, the only other member of the family who loves math and physics, have always had a special bond. <laughs> Ever since I could grasp the concept of simple math, my grandfather has sat me down to teach me everything from why the sky is blue to why sust sustainability is the key to a better future. He has challenged me and has always treated my ideas, big or small, with as much respect as those of his fellow co-workers. We are both ambitious, persistent, and terribly stubborn, but we love to create and explore. This often leads us to t taking on challenges and debating on different ways of solving them. I was about 10 years old when he told me to build a two-story gingerbread house without the help of a glue gun would not be possible. I, being young and extremely disappointed at the idea that I would not be able to eat the gingerbread house, decided to take up this challenge upon myself and only use icing. Now, I have to admit I did fail the first couple of times. However, by the time Santa was supposed to come, there stood a very avant-garde two-story gingerbread house, com completely edible. <laughs> Thus, it should come as no surprise that I've just graduated this past June from a five-year architecture degree um, program in California from San Luis Obispo. He seemed a bit skeptical at first at the thought of me not becoming an engineer, but rather an architect. However, warmed up to the idea when I decided to minor in environmental sustainability. He worked with me in finding the solutions to the problems that I encountered and supported me all along the way. He even helped me in my purchase of my own 3D print printer, of which I assembled and got the chance to master over the past five years of university. Today I'm older and I have gathered various ideas and developed my own specialty in the world of design and engineering. This has enabled me to finally pass on some of my knowledge to my grandfather, as he has passed on so much of his own to me. He has proven to me how one person can inspire, but more importantly, the difference that a team can make together. Thus today, while honoring my grandfather and the past, I make a promise to look to the future, to take everything that my grandfather has taught me and still believes in strongly today, and be that difference in my career as a designer and an architect. So without further ado, I introduce my mother, Nicola Richterlund. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. I would especially like to thank Bill Chapin very much for the opportunity to speak on behalf of my father tonight. And I would also like to thank the gentleman by the name of Martin Shaw, who uh, proposed my father's name uh, for a candidate for the Automotive Hall of Fame. In doing a bit of research about the Hall of Fame, I found that they were originally called the Automobile Old Timers. <laughs> and their mission was to perpetuate the memories of the early automotive pioneers. The group was dedicated to honoring automotive people from all parts of the worldwide automotive industry which was a grandiose task indeed, I think. Today, we are here to celebrate the induction of another old timer, whom you know as Roy Lunn, and who I know as my father. As you have seen in the video, he is a man dedicated to his passion 
and he has succeeded in his career to bring the automotive world many vehicles that have changed the face of the automotive in history. But I know him perhaps in a way that no one else does, and I would like to share some personal experiences with you tonight. My father is somehow had to make hard choices uh, to uproot my mother, sister, and I from England in the 1960s to move to the United States against the will of all of the relatives in England who thought we were moving to the colonies. <laughs> this was difficult, but through sheer strength of character and perseverance, he did make a better life for us. Arriving from England in that period of time was very unsettling for me. I had very short hair and a funny accent, and I had very few friends in high school. However, this was a very exciting time for the development of the Ford GT. And personalities like Bruce McLaren and Phil Hill were household names. And thinking about innovative names for cars like the Mustang were part of our household dinner conversations, which I came to understand later were not your average family talks. <laughs> At a time when women in the pits was forbidden, my short hair came in handy. When my father took me to the races, I appreciated very much being able to see firsthand the results of my father's work and feel the energy that motivated him to create future cars. Little did he know that the day he came to pick me up from Ann Arbor High School, driving a test version of the GT40, that he <laughs> instantly changed my status as a junior that year. <laughs> As half my classmates saw me slide into the seat of a loud sports car, and then <laughs> it barely came up to my navel, <laughs> and tear away in that car, at least I got a date to prom that year. <laughs> Thinking always ahead, thinking always of trying to do more brings a state of mind in which nothing is impossible. Some of you might recognize this as a quote from Henry Ford. This quote seems entirely pertinent regarding my father, who was always believing in only the best will do. To this end, I wish to mention that my mother has been this, his staunchest supporter and ally throughout the 69 years of their marriage. They are now retired and living in Santa Barbara, very close to where I am. I know that my father is very sorry that he could not in attend this induction in person, but I feel very proud and deeply honored that he should ask my daughter and I to accept the award on his behalf. I wish only to add that he is still hard at work. At his drawing board with plans for a new people's car and in addition to writing his fourth book, so please watch this space. <laughs> Without further ado, I would like to uh, direct your attention to the screen for some closing comments from my father. And 
I would like to say heartfelt thanks to all of you for giving him the support in a wonderful career. Thank you very much.